But if I'm going to go running, what kind of love do I have? Because his son laid down his life. Amen. Son let that arm be stretched. He let the nails be <coughs> Oh, we want to run as soon as it gets so painful. Oh, I got hurt there, Lord. I can't take that. They look at me weird. Somebody's got an attitude with me. What's called grow up. The Bible tells me that He's come to perfect us. Amen. He's called us to be sons of God, not just children of God. We're a part of His family. He is Father, and He's called me to be a son. And He's endued me with the right, the authority, to run the Father's business. A lot of us, you know, when we're entrepreneurial in our spirit, you know, we want to get out there. We want to make some money. We want to make it happen. We want to have our own little business, right? Amen? It's okay if I just tell the truth. I know how it is. I was that way when I was young. I'll go out there and start my own business. Why? Because I can go and do something. I can, I can make something of myself. I, I can do what I do well, and I'm going to make some money at it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to earn something. That's not nothing wrong with that thought. You understand what I'm saying? But you know what? When I got hold of Jesus, and God started to show me I'm a son and do with the Father's business, I'm going to trust Him with His goods, that I can do what He's called me to do, guess what? It changed my perspective a little bit. It wasn't about me no more. It wasn't about what I could get out of this deal. It was about how many I could save, how many I could help, how many I could share the good news with the God who loves you. If you leave here today not knowing He's your Father, it's only because you have a hard heart. We'll pray for that today if you want. We'll help you to open up to your Father because your Father loves you so much that He didn't hold back anything. Amen. He gave His best. Amen. He gave His Son. It'd be like me giving my children. It'd be like you giving your children. That's extreme love. Amen? Amen. We have an extreme God. He loves us with a passion. But we want... He wants us to love Him the same way. And we want to be able to worship Him in the same way. He said, the first commandment is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart. With all your heart. With all your soul, your ability to think and reason. That's your soul, amen? Soul is where your seat of your emotions is and where your reasoning facilities are. With all of your soul. With all of your spirit. With all of your strength. Because you know what? This is a tough walk. It ain't even easy. My Bible tells me that we're meek, that that strength comes under control. The only reason you don't see us blowing up and killing folks is because it ain't the will of God. It isn't about that. It's about demonstrating His love, and sometimes that means I got to turn the other cheek. Sometimes that means I got to take a I got to take a wound or a blow for Jesus, so that I don't I don't defame His character, so I don't dis, you know bring Him into disrepute. That people think that you know Christ is a, a wild card. He ain't no wild card. It isn't about running my lips. It isn't about about being angry and silly, isn't it? You know, yeah, we get angry. We've got emotions, but the Bible tells me to be angry and sin not. Yeah. It's about living real life with real people. We talked about this just the other week. Things don't offend you. People do. Things never offend you. People do. Why do you think that is? Because God's allowing people to sharpen people. Iron sharpens iron. Yeah. People come into your life <coughs> to help uncover the things that God still wants to polish, to mold, to perfect. A walk with Jesus will cost you your life. It'd be so easy to just have an altar call and just say, how many want to accept God's great gift, His love, and be a child of God today? Well, I would be lying to you if I didn't tell you it's going to cost you your life. Amen. Amen. Because unless you're ready to go ahead and lay down your pride, lay down your self-will, lay down everything you think is so valuable about your life, you ain't ready for Jesus because right. Jesus gave it all. And Jesus is now sitting at the right hand of the Father. The Bible says over in Philippians that we're studying on Wednesday night. Great Bible study. If you want to come out, join us. He said that God has, because Jesus humbled himself, took on the form of a servant, and he came to serve humanity and show them what it was all about, how we should love and work with each other, not to cast each other off because we've got problems. Oh, just caught this person sleeping around. Lord, let's just kill her. You know, they wanted to kill her. My story the law says we should kill her. <coughs> he says, which one of you don't have sin in your life? And they all walked out. You know the story. It ain't a story. It's a reality. They all walked out. The woman was left to perform. He says, woman, where's your accusers? She looks up and they're all gone. He says, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. This is about God transforming your life. This is about God changing who you are. I'm not here to ask you to make a decision for Jesus Christ. I'm asking you to commit your life to Christ. Because unless you commit your life to Christ, unless you receive Him for who He is, you'll never rule and reign with Him. Yeah. You think He's going to have folks that can barely hold on, ruling and reign with Him throughout eternity? He tried that with Satan. Satan got a big head and poof. Jesus said, I see Him as lightning coming out of heaven. Amen. I said, man, this is great, man. This is great. God's got a lot of good things going on. I'm going to put my throne right up by His. In fact, maybe a little bit higher. That would be kind of steam. Poof. Out He goes. 
You think God's looking for anybody to come into his heaven being weak? No. God ain't left us here to be weak, has he? Any of us that have been walking with Christ, we know not only is it a breaking process, but there's a strength that comes, and it's called grace. Amen? Amen? God's power within our lives to be able to endure even the most bitter situations, to be able to forgive even the toughest things, to be able to look at those that may have molested us and say, I forgive you. Those that may have abused us and say, I forgive you. Those that may have tried to kill us and despitefully use us and say, I forgive you. That's strength. God's grace gives you the power to walk in a life that you don't own yourself. It's called God's life in you. It's eternal life. God's looking for those that can begin to work out an eternal life here on earth to be able to sit with him in heaven. <coughs> so I'm not here to belong today. I'm here to tell you the truth. Don't you think, how many people, how many masses may have walked into a building today to go and worship God and celebrate the fact that he has risen and walked right back out because that's their program. A little skit, a little offering, a little, little do this, a little do that, but we'll send you on your way. I'm telling you, you're here to lay down your life for Christ because he laid his down. Amen. 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 And if you don't accept that as the absolute truth, then you haven't read your Bible, and that's okay. Just I challenge you to read your word. Don't go through life ignorantly. I'll tell you what, all you got to do is look at believers that have read their Bible. My Bible tells me we're living epistles. You can read the words of Christ across my heart and across my actions. Amen. And if I ain't willing to turn the other cheek, then I ain't worthy of my Lord. Could he turn his other cheek? He gave his life. It's a tough walk. But it's a good walk. And God's love is there. And he blesses us. And he keeps us. And he prospers us. And he causes us to exceed and have the victory. So I challenge you today. Examine your walk. <coughs> it's, it's, not, it's too late. Amen. The Bible says this is of surety because God had given him a name. Again, from our Bible study that we're looking at Philippians chapter 2 there, God has given him a name that's above every name, that at that name, the name of Jesus, that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord to the glory of the Father. I'm telling you right now, it don't matter if you want to confess him as Lord and give him glory now. When the sky splits and you're in front of his presence, you will do it. There will be no disobeying the King of Kings and Lord of Lords because he is the ultimate authority. Amen. He has come and he will rule and reign supreme because the old will be done away with. Behold, all things will become new. He will establish his kingdom here on earth. And right now it's not on earth except through our lives. His kingdom comes in our lives. You can become a vessel of carrying his kingdom when you accept Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior, not just Savior. He's called us to preach the gospel of the kingdom. God's rule and reign throughout the entire universe. Amen. And he can only be established in Christ. So we preach the gospel of Christ. The good news is that Jesus, yes, Jesus, <laughs> no, Jesus, Jesus has come to save us and redeem us from being lost. Amen. Lord, amen. amen. So I'll tell you, I'm encouraged today. I know that my knees surely shall bow, and it does Almost every day. <laughs> Maybe it should more. I don't know. But it does bow. And my tongue does confess that he is Jesus Christ, the Lord Amen. and Savior of my life. Amen. He has given me confidence and peace and assurance. I don't have to worry about my failures. I don't have to worry about if I've fallen and <coughs> that I can't be forgiven. Because he tells me that I'm supposed to forgive men. Sometimes 70 times 7 in a day. That's a lot of forgiving. That's a lot of forgiving. Oh, we can barely get it out once if we're lucky in a day. But he's telling me 70 times 7 in a day. You know why? Because my God, my Father will forgive me 70 times 7 in a day. So how dare I ever let the enemy or the accuser of the brethren tell me otherwise that I can't be forgiven for what I just did. Today, some of you need to be set free. Some of you need to be able to have God say, you are forgiven, my son, my daughter. Don't you worry about it. If you say you love me and I'm, you're sorry, you just don't want to go that way no more, that you would rather have my way versus your way, you, it's done forgiven. God ain't here to make you pay any penance. You can't ever do anything more precious than what the blood of Jesus, as it was poured out on this ground every day. Amen? That's reality. That's truth. <laughs> if Christ is risen, then we're all dead. Amen. But because Christ is living in our hearts, we know better. We have a hope that fades not away. Right. And so today, I'm excited. I'm a little passionate. Let me say this. Every day. It was summer, September, 1988. Discharged from the Marine Corps. I found my knee. <coughs> I was saved as a human child. I had backslidden. 
and went a long ways away from the Lord when I was in the Marine Corps. But when I got out of the Marine Corps and I was discharged and I came back home, the conviction of God was all over my life, and I didn't have any way to preach the gospel to me. I knew better. I knew better because as a little child I knew Jesus. But I had forgotten about him. And actually made it, made up some wild stories. Made up wild stories so that I could justify my unbelief. But I'll tell you, I remember the day. I remember the day. September of 1988, I gave my life back to Jesus. And I ain't been the same since. 